Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. And we are very glad that you have joined us for worship this week. This is our second week of worship during a new year in the church um, season that we call Advent. Hello, I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life, and I'm glad that you could join us today. And I'm David Evans, Sign Language Interpreter. Let us enter into worship together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord is in us, anointing us, sending us to bring the good news. What is the good news? Healing the brokenhearted. Freeing the captives. Comforting mm -hmm. those who mourn. Providing a cloak of praise. Lifting the heavy spirit. Loosening the weight of grief and loss. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord has come. Each week during Advent, we have a special Advent song and so uh, before we open our Advent calendars and light the candles, we will join in that song together. We light a candle for hope And a world that's longing for
last week. I want to invite the kids to come up close to their screens. If we were at Bread of Life inside the church building, I would ask everyone to come. I'll ask the kids, the young at heart, to come and sit on the steps at the front of uh, the church. But for today, for this year, we have to just get close to our screens. And we'll open up our calendar, our window on the calendar, and see what it says. Day number six, right there, it's down at the bottom, inside that N. So we'll open it up and see what does it say. Here's some information for you about the um, power of little chicks, little birds. Let's get it in focus. It won't focus. All right, I'll read it to you. We can help a family spread their wings because when little baby chicks grow up to become chickens, their eggs not only provide ongoing supply of protein rich meals, food for the family that is, those eggs can help start a small business. Those chicken eggs can help the family have a steady source of income. So maybe you want to help a family that needs some good food and some good income, and you can help buy some chicks for only $10. So maybe you have some allowance money that you can use to buy some chicks for a family. How can you do that? There's a website that has all sorts of animals available to help families. And the website is ELCA. Dot org. And then there's a slash, and it's good gifts, G O O D G I F T S. And you can see all the cute, cute uh, baby animals that families can get, but also you can learn how those animals can help families in developing countries um, have income that is steady and secure and how those animals can help the families know um, they'll have food to eat as well. All right, so I'm gonna have you stay close to your screens because I'm gonna go light the advent candles. Um, and today we light the candle about love. So love, looks like lots of different things. And sometimes love looks like buying chicks to help families have food and income. We remember the prophet Joel, who spoke of weeping and mourning in the face of destruction. These words are still hard to accept. We remember Joel's brutal honesty in the midst of chaos. How do we embrace the mystery?
through Joel, we know God longs for us to return with authentic hearts ready to change. Today, the second Sunday of Advent, God meets us in our uncertainty. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Prayer for the day. Lord, the young people around us offer prophecies that challenge and lead to our judgment. So we nod politely with clenched teeth and doubtful hearts. Lord, you invite us to dream new dreams. But honestly, we prefer the familiarity of the past. Winds of vision swirl around us. So we close the windows and bolt the doors. Even on us. even here and now. Your spirit will pour forth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our Bible reading from today is from Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, and verses 28 and 29. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping and with sorrow. Tear your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love and ready to forgive.
Who knows whether he will have a change of heart and leave a blessing behind him? A grain offering, a drink offering for the Lord your God. After that, I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. In those days, I will also pour out my spirit on the male and female slaves. My family in Christ, in the mystery and uncertainty of life, we embrace faith. And we practice our faith every day by doing it with prayer, with trusting God, with waiting and watching to see what God brings to us. So this Advent, it is my hope that each of us and the whole community of Bread of Life that we will practice our faith every day. All right, my friends, this is the second week of Advent. Uh, and so the point of my message for today is this, that the message from the Bible, from Joel, the prophet, that message is for us to return to God. And God's message for us is that we are beloved. So we'll jump right in. As I said, today is the second Sunday of Advent. And during Advent, we prepare our hearts and our homes. We do all of this preparation to celebrate that the one who loves us comes to us. During Advent, we prepare for Christmas and we light candles. Last week, we lit a candle to remind us of hope. And today, our Advent candle reminds us about love. And last week, as we entered into Advent, we wondered together about adjusting our expectations for this year. Wondering how we can enter into Advent with openness. Because right now, everyone, everyone in the world is experiencing a lot of grief. And we were reminded, as we wondered about all of these questions, we were reminded that we can choose to draw near to God. And as we choose to draw near to God, we fully expect God to draw near to us. And as we do those things, as we draw near to God and God draws near to us, we are changed. Our expectations, our disappointments, our grief, it's all more tolerable. We can bear it again. And in a similar 
vein, this week we encounter the prophet Joel, who firmly reminds us to return to God. Joel, the prophet, and God don't want just a simple, oh, okay, I'll do that, sure, no problem, it's fine, whatever. This is a call to rend our hearts, to tear apart our hearts, sort of like how people might tear apart their clothing when they are full of dismay and grief. This call to return to God is a call to lament and to repent. Now, when we lament, we spend time considering and acknowledging all that is painful and miserable in the world. And that is a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of misery and suffering. When we lament, we take seriously all of the things that draw us and others away from God. We take time to become aware of the pain and misery in the world. And we feel it. We feel it so much that we shout out to God to pay attention, to notice what is happening now, to notice what is happening here. That is when we lament, that is lament. We're crying out on behalf of other people. When we repent, we turn around from the ways that we have been involved in creating pain and misery in the world. We acknowledge that we are part of another's pain. We turn around. We turn toward God. We confess our involvement in hurting others and we commit ourselves once again, to shape our lives and our actions on God's values and priorities. Now, in some cases, uh, we can be aware that we're contributing to painful and miserable things around us. We can think about the ways that maybe we judge others. Maybe you see someone driving too fast or not wearing a mask when they go into a store. You know, we see pictures of people gathering without taking precautions in the midst of this pandemic. And we judge. And maybe if they're, um, you know, in uh, 
maybe we decide to act against them. I know in these days, there are a lot of tense times in, in our house, just here at our house, when one of us or maybe several of us are irritated or annoyed. Now, we don't on purpose trip one another or push somebody down the stairs. But when we are in those spaces, we aren't actively helping each other either. And I know when I'm in that kind of mood and that kind of mode, and my family will attest to this, I don't want to help anyone, particularly the people that I live with. So when I'm in that kind of mood, I'm contributing to pain in the world. And I know it. Now, in other cases, we might be unaware of how we are contributing to painful and miserable things around us. Because there is a lot of history and there are a lot of actions that other people take that make that pain and misery, it's unknown to us. And we still kind of get involved because we live in a community, we are united together in our country and around the world. But here in the United States, there have been a couple of movements recently that have helped raise our awareness. Um, the two I'm thinking of, one is the Black Lives Matter movement. The other one is um, hashtag Me Too. Both of those movements have been working to raise our awareness to the ways in which some of us benefit because of the pain and suffering of others in our community. What, what does that mean? I can hear David asking that. Pastor Rochelle, what is that supposed to mean? <clears throat> so a little bit about both of those movements to help us see how we're involved in things that hurt others and we don't even know it. So Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is reminding us again and again, they look at these examples of when people are, black people are killed and they remind us that there are laws and systems, the justice system, the education system, those different systems that assume that people who are black and brown, they are worse, they are less valuable the people who have white skin. Black Lives Matter raises our awareness to the harm, the pain and misery that people are experiencing here and now in our neighborhoods, and in our towns. Black Lives Matter reminds us that this problem of racism, it's not an old problem that's been solved. It's a current problem. And we all must work together to resist racism and in fact, to say, we are against racism.
the Black Lives Matter has been opening our eyes and raising our awareness to how those of us who have light skin are benefiting because of others' pain and misery. The other movement uh, is hashtag me too. And that movement reminds us of how women and girls have been taken advantage of. They have been silenced and kept from growing into their full, pot full potential because of sexual assault and abuse. Me Too has helped raise our awareness that women and girls are told in very subtle and pervasive ways that their value is less than men or boys value. Me too raises our awareness to the harm and pain and misery that women and girls are experiencing here and now in our neighborhoods, and our towns. Sexual misconduct is not an old problem that has been solved. It is a problem that we all must resist, that we all must work against. So when we take time to lament, to deeply consider and acknowledge the things that are painful and miserable in the world, then we can repent. When we take time to acknowledge the things that draw us and others away from God, we can identify how you and I contribute to painful and miserable situations in the world, both near and far. The process of lament breaks our hearts. And it takes time and patience for both ourselves and for others. Because lament opens our hearts to the pain and misery that others experience. This last week, the last several days um, have been hard for me. And I had several days when I struggled, really struggled to do my work. And really, I had to climb into my bed and retreat from the world. On those days, I needed time and space to be sad and to acknowledge my loneliness. I had to give myself some space and be patient with myself until I could understand 
what was happening. Really, I was lamenting. And my body, my body was helping me. My body said, you can't keep going. You have to stop. You can't keep carrying all of this weight. Instead, you need to let it go. Give it to God. Because there are so many things that I have no control over. And these things, I've been carrying them, taking them on, adding more and more and more responsibility to myself. My body said, no, stop. Stop. The kinds of things I keep taking on myself is the helplessness and the guilt I feel about children who are at the border of the United States, separated from their families. I feel helpless to change that situation. And to think about those children breaks my heart. Or the stories of pain and loss that I have read in the newspaper and on Facebook and in other places. Those stories break my heart. or for the pictures of mistreated animals. Animals that I can't help. <laughs> it breaks my heart. Or the ways that I feel helpless to make the world better for my kids. All of those things that I carry with me every day. And I somehow think it's my responsibility. Finally, this week, my body said, no, no, it's not. Stop and bring these things to God. And as I did that, I could also begin to repent. I could say, oh my goodness, I need help. I'm packing my life and my days so full, I don't even have time to feel, to feel the pain and misery of these stories that I'm reading. I'm not in control of these situations and I need to repent. I need to turn away from thinking that I can really change it. In today's Bible lesson, Joel's message for us is to return to God. To bring all of these things to God. 
not to keep carrying it around as if my carrying around guilt and responsibility well like that would change something instead bring it to god and god's message for us in that process in bringing our grief and our fear our anger our everything god's message for us in that is that we are beloved when we open our hearts to others and we acknowledge how our actions or inactions how that can contribute to another's pain we are not judged or condemned we are loved God is awaiting our return in order to surround us with mercy and compassion to show us love and forgiveness to be kind and gentle God is moved to act when God's creation is in misery and in pain. When our hearts are torn apart because we acknowledge and believe someone else's story, we are more like God. We turn toward God. So in this second week of Advent, as you go forth from worship, remember Joel's message for us. Return to God. Go back to God. And remember God's message. You are beloved. Prayers of the people. Advent God, you come to us in hope, love, joy, and peace. Thank you for hope that includes others in faith. Thank you for love that sustains our lives, even in uncertain times. Thank you for joy that illumines and inspires our lives. Thank you for peace that allows us to live in friendship 
with others. You come to us, God, and we still need to remember. That things are not how they have always been. And this is not how it will always be. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that your kingdom has come. It is growing among us now. And that the time will come when it fills the world with justice and love. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember. Many people experience poverty, pain, trauma, and grief. These experiences make your kingdom feel like a faraway dream. Many people are dismayed by your followers. They long to see your love and justice expressed through your followers. And we followers often make mistakes and fail. Many people in your church long to be faithful and to make a positive difference. A positive difference in addition to caring for their children, their extended families, their students, their jobs, and many more responsibilities. You come to us, God, and still we hope. That we experience God with us in every moment of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we invite you to share the peace with one another. It might mean that you um, need to send a text message or write a card or um, call a friend later to share the good news that we have peace with God. Each week we um, share the peace and we acknowledge how life is so strange these days. And we also ask for your financial support because what we're doing isn't free and we continue to do the work that God calls us to do. And as we um, live our lives of faith, we look to the Bible for examples for how we live. And so our prayer and our invitation into the offering, we look at Mary, Jesus' mom, and we pray 
that we offer our lives and our resources to God in the same way that Mary offered her life. So we pray that God would help us um, praise the Lord in our hearts, that our spirits will rejoice in God, our Savior, because God has remembered us. We are humble servants and we celebrate the amazing thing that our mighty God has done for us. Here at Bread of Life, we are invited into a particular calling, just like Mary was invited to do a particular calling. Mary was to become the mom of Jesus and here at Bread of Life, God asks us to give witness to the good news that God loves us and to share this good news with the deaf community and all of their families. So each week, we take time to invite you into this calling. How can you help us in this mission? How can we help one another in our mission? What are your ideas for how we can connect with the deaf community? And we ask you for financial support because this work isn't free and we need your help. And we're practicing being more bold, asking for your help. So at this time, we ask that you would prepare your offerings and send a check to Bread of Life or use PayPal to make one-time or ongoing donations for the work that we do here at Bread of Life. Prayer of Offering. Lord, from one generation to another, you have shown mercy on those who honor you. You have stretched out your mighty arm. You have scattered the conceited and confused their schemes. You bring down tyrants and lift up the lowly. You fill the hungry with good things. But send the rich away empty. You have kept your promises to us. You have come to our help. You will show your people love forever. Our hearts praise you, O Lord. <clears throat> the
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world, in righteousness, then you will make all things new. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We invite you to sign together the Holy Holy. This will not be voiced. In the night in which Jesus was, uh, on Jesus' last night, when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, blessed it, and broke it. Saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood for the forgiveness of sin for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. This will not be voiced. Come to the table. Join Jesus in the feast. Come to the table. Jesus comes to us. Come to the table. Be fed with Jesus' words and Jesus' food.
everyone is invited to this table because this table belongs to God. We are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. In your homes, when you serve one another with the bread, please use language of body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, please use language of blood of Christ shed for you. If you're by yourself, allow me to administer the bread and the cup for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice made visible in flame. You call us to be your people, faithful, courageous. Jesus embraced his mission in the waters of baptism. He went out to field, feed and heal and comfort others. Lead us now from this gathering, fed and encouraged. to join in your transforming work, to feed and heal and comfort others. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Before we are sent, Receive this blessing. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from our Creator, our Savior, our Counselor, and Friend. May you know these gifts. each moment of every day. God, in your honor, you promise that your servants will go in peace. You send us now. We have experienced your salvation. You have prepared us with everyone looking on. Your faith shines forth for all. Your glory is revealed even in faithful people. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>